Well, I think there's already enormous amount of evidence. You know, certainly we have direct evidence that, uh, for example, consciousness is doing things that the brain cannot possibly do. Just to mention one of many would be the, uh, the whole area of observations in near-death situations where the person can be in a state of cardiac death or even have flat EEG and the consciousness is sort of out of the body and is observing the, uh, the procedure of resuscitation or decides to go out for a little trip and checks what's happening in other uh, rooms of that building or goes through the ceilings and observes the environment of the hospital or experiences something that's thousands of miles away. And uh, we have now even observations showing that people congenitally blind for organic reasons can see when their consciousness gets out of the body. So you know, we, have, we have enormous number uh, now of what uh, traditional science calls uh, anomalous phenomena, which means something that you know, current science cannot explain. And historically this has been a reason to to change the paradigm, if there's just too much that you cannot explain, uh, you know, the paradigm has a problem. One of the definitions of anomalous phenomena is what is left when you apply a bad theory. So I think it's all this is an indication that we need some radical, radical change. And uh, I believe that in the future there will not be any conflict between uh, science properly understood and spirituality properly understood, you know. We are not trying in transpersonal psychology to put together dogmas of organized religions and science, whether it's Cartesian-Newtonian science or new paradigm science. But there is no reason why we couldn't study transpersonal experiences, you know. Describe the phenomenology, uh, uh, describe the impact that it has on people and, and also the, the challenging uh, observations that you do when you study these the, the, the you know, paradigm challenges that happen.